Hello, welcome to Einstein Mechanics. This is 50 multiple choice questions on normal stress and strain. So we are going to solve objective questions, MCQs, on strength of materials. And these are examinable questions. Number one, shear stress is defined as the force per unit and we know that stress is force per unit area. Are we good? The unit of shear stress is, and that is, since it is force per unit area, it is Newton per meter square. Newton per meter square. Number three. Shear stress is calculated by dividing the applied force by that is still the cross-sectional area. So these are some type of question they can ask you. Shear stress is calculated by dividing the applied force by the cross-sectional area. Shear strain is defined as the ratio of the change in length to the... So basically strain is the ratio of the change in length to the original length so here is the original length or the original shape number five the unit of shear strain is and we know that strain has no unit so it is none of them neither meter radian so none number six which of the following materials has a high shear modulus and among the options is steel. So steel is not likely to shear as compared to the other materials. Shear modulus, that's number seven. Shear modulus is a measure of a materials. So as we are saying, steel has the highest shear modulus. Shear modulus is the measure of the materials elasticity. Yes, shear to slide over one surface. So if the material is much elastic, it is more what going to shear. So it is the measure of the material's elasticity. Hooke's law for shear stress and strain state that Hooke's law for shear stress and strain state that they are that's directly proportional. The stress is directly proportional to the strain. Number nine. The shear modulus is equal to the ratio of shear stress to... So if you want to calculate for the shear modulus, it is equal to the ratio of shear stress to the shear strain. Remember, shear stress is proportional to strain. Therefore, if you make the proportional the subject which is the shear modulus it is going to be shear stress to shear strain which of the following statements about shear stress and strain is true one shear stress produces a change in volume shear stress is always negative shear stress can and strain are always equal shear strain is perpendicular to the applied force and the answer is shear strain is perpendicular to the applied force it is perpendicular number 11 when a material experiences shear stress the deformation it undergoes is called that is shear strain you no know, strain is the change or the deformation produced when an, an object experiences what stress. So if the object is experiencing shear stress, the strain will be the shear strain. Are we good? Number 12. Which of the following materials is likely to have a lower shear modulus? And that is aluminium. Still has the highest and aluminium has the lowest. 13. The relationship between shear stress and shear strain for a linearly 
elastic material is so the relationship between the shear stress and shear strain for a linearly elastic material is that's linear that's proportional you know shear stress is proportional to the strain therefore it is going to be what linear the maximum shear stress a material can withstand without permanent deformation is known as so the maximum stress that any material can withstand without permanent, permanently deformation is known as and that's the ultimate stress that's the largest stress the material can withstand 15 shear stress is distributed over a if we are calculating for shear stress we calculate it over a that's a surface are we okay the cross-sectional area of the surface 16 which of the following statements about shear stress and shear strain is correct shear stress causes elongation shear strain is always positive shear stress and strain are scalar quantities shear strain is parallel to the applied force and the answer is shear strain is parallel to the applied force are you okay when the body is going to shear the strain is going to be parallel to the applied force the shear stress strain curve for a ductile material typically shows when you draw the shear strain curve for a ductile material it shows plastic deformation plastic deformation number 18 the shear modulus is also known as we have bulk modulus young modulus rigidity modulus poisson's ratio and the answer is c the rigid modulus are we okay 19 which of the following materials is likely to have the highest shear modulus yes we've tackled this question and the answer is steel steel is likely to have the highest shear modulus shear stress is the result of so a body will shear as a result of tensile forces compressive forces bending forces parallel forces and the answer is parallel forces and it will cause a shear 21 the shear modulus is defined as the ratio of the shear stress to the shear strain repeated question the formula for shear stress is given by we know that shear stress is given by the force per unit area so force per unit area 23 shear strain is a measure of elastic deformation plastic deformation tensile deformation thermal deformation and the answer is we have plastic deformation the shear stress strain curve for a brittle material typically shows it shows brittle fracture brittle fracture 25 which of the following materials is an example of viscoelastic material and rubber is one of the best viscoelastic materials are we okay 26 shear stress is responsible for which type of deformation shear stress is responsible for which type of deformation and that is the shear deformation meaning the shear strain the shear deformation 27 the shear modulus is a measure of a material's resistance to sometimes the clue is even in the question the shear modulus is a measure of a material's resistance to and that is to the shear stress because this is a shear modulus and that should be a resistance to the shear stress 28 in a torsion test 
in a torsion test, shear stress is applied to a material through, and that is through twisting, through twisting. 29. Shear strain is calculated by dividing the displacement by the, that's the length. We know that the strain is the deformation, that is the displacement of the deformation by the length of the material. 30. The shear strain formula is given by, and we know that it's changing shape to original shape, that is the displacement to the length, changing shape to original shape. 31. The slope of the shear or the slope of the stress strain curve in the elastic deformation region is when you calculate for the slope for the stress strain curve in the elastic region it is called that's the elastic modulus e you know in the elastic region we have for the elastic modulus what is the stress strain curve what is it and it is the relationship between stress and strain. It is a curve drawn with stress on the y-axis and the strain on the x-axis. So it is the relationship between stress and strain. Which point on the stress-strain curve occurs after the proportionality limit? And that is the elastic limit after the proportionality limit where stress is proportional to strain you go to the elastic limit 34 which point on the stress strain curve occurs after the ultimate point and that is the breaking point after the ultimate point that means the highest amount of force the material can withstand then it begins to break necklace set in and it begins to break 35 where is the nickel region where is the nickel or nickel region and the answer is the area between the ultimate point and rupture after the ultimate point the material begins to what break that means the point between the ultimate point and the breaking point becomes what the nickel region 36. The property of a material by which it can be drawn into thin wires is known as, and that is ductility, the ability of a material to be drawn into wires. 37. If the material has identical elastic properties in all directions, it is called and such material is called isotropic isotropic material 38 why is it the strain why is it the strain the fundamental property but not the stress when we consider stress and strain we take strain as the fundamental property but not the stress why and this is because its value is calculated in the laboratory. The value of the strain is calculated in the laboratory or the stress. Are we okay? 39. The material in which large deformation is possible before absolute failure by rupture is called, and that is called, a ductile material. 40. If the material has different elastic properties in perpendicular directions, it is called and it is called autotropic material. We saw isotropic and if the elastic property is perpendicular in different directions, it is called autotropic material. 41. The phenomenon of slow extension of materials 
having a constant load that's the increasing with the time is called and that is called creeping creeping on the stress strain curve if the load is applied and there is a slow extension then we call that as the material is what creeping 42 what is the bulk modulus of elasticity and the ratio of the volumetric stress to the volumetric strain is called bulk modulus of elasticity 43 which of the following is true if the, if the value of Poisson's ratio is zero? So when Poisson's ratio is zero, which among these is true? And it means the material is what? Rigid. It means the material is rigid. What is the expression for modulus of rigidity in terms of modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio? So G is equal to, and when you combine this and Poisson's ratio, you should get that. The rigidity is equal to modulus of elasticity over 2 one, into bracket 1 plus Poisson's ratio. 45. What is the limiting values of Poisson's ratio? The range of Poisson's ratio and that's 0 and was 0 0.5 depending on the material they have their constant Poisson's ratio 0 and 0 0.5 46 the relationship between young modulus E bulk modulus K if the value of Poisson's ratio is unity that is 1 will be so after combining bulk modulus and young modulus, then for a constant or Poisson's ratio of 1, the young modulus is going to be, and that is going to be negative 3k. Young modulus is going to be negative 3 multiplied by the bulk modulus. 47. What will be the elastic modulus of a material if the Poisson's ratio for the material is 0 0.5? What will be the elastic modulus of a material if the Poisson's ratio for the material is 0 0.5? And that is going to be 3 times its shear modulus. 3 times its shear modulus. 48. Which point on the stress strain curve occurs after the lower yield point? So after drawing the stress and the strain curve, which point occurs after the lower yield point? And that is A. A as the answer. 49. The law which states that within the elastic limit, strain produced is proportional to the stress produced is known as and this is very simple that is the hooks law hooks law states that within the elastic limit stress is proportional to what strain and lastly 50 what is the factor of safety what is the factor of safety and it is the ratio of ultimate stress to the permissible stress so when you divide the ultimate stress by the permissible stress you are going to get your factor of safety